Exploring Montana adventures on and off the beaten path. Here's Road Trippin' with Laurel Staples, sponsored by Explorer Maps. It's a 19th century mining town tucked away in a remote area of Jefferson County. In this road trip, I travel to Elkhorn, exploring the community's past and present. We kick up the dirt just south of Boulder on Elkhorn Road and head for the mountains. 11 miles later, a first glimpse at the historic mining town of Elkhorn. It's a mix of new and old. Around 50 residents, most of them part-time, live here, including John Smith. This is a part of history. And when you live here, you think about all the people that came before you, how hardworking they were, the efforts they put in to build this place. Elkhorn's history dates back to the 1870s with the discovery of silver. The town boomed to more than 2,500 residents, drawing businesses and entertainment. Fraternity Hall served as the town's social center, a place still used for events with the building well preserved. They had bands, they had a, a, an opera that played, they had different club meetings here. Also inside, a model of the town's historic water tank with the real one built in 1890, one of the oldest in the U.S. still on the same site. We'll see it later, but first, next door. It's called Gillen Hall. Another historic gathering place. On the walls, a peek into its past as decades of wallpaper peel away showing intricate designs. But the building's claim to fame, it's one of the most photographed rooms in the state. Uh, I think photographers just like that look, looking out through the ghost town. Back outside, a new look to the park's interpretive signs thanks to residents. We wanted to put old photos in with the sign so people could see what the place used to look like. On the other side of the road, a space once filled with bustling shops. My favorite is a candy store up here, <laughs> but this is a Hoffman barbershop. It was the only place back in the day one could buy a tub full of water to bathe in. Ford's candy store and others once stood nearby. From there, it's a short walk to the Franklin Bud Smith Memorial Park in honor of a beloved resident who passed away in 2015. As we explore, we discover a piece of Elkhorn's past, a shoe. And the amazing thing about him is the feet are so small, the shoes are all tiny. So the people couldn't have been very big back then. From there, it's a short drive to the Elkhorn mine. It produced around 14 million in silver during its most productive years. Tom Smith has started working in the mine at the age of 18. Well, never having been down in a mine before, Initially, it was kind of spooky, and I was just kind of standing there, and then all of a sudden, I heard this big roar, and then from the side of the wall down, it just disappeared, and I just stepped back, you know, otherwise, I'd still be down there. On the way to the cemetery, we see what remains of the old mine manager's house, followed by the old water tower recently restored. Then a bird's eye view of Elkhorn, and soon the cemetery's picket wood and iron fencing. Inside, grave sites date back to the 1880s, with many of the headstones belonging to children. And I heard that the water wagon was contaminated, and so all the kids got diphtheria, and many of them died. And so you'll see a lot of graves from 1889. Very sad time in Elkhorn. Elkhorn's most famous resident is also buried here, Peter Weiss, who discovered the rich silver veins of Elkhorn. His death was somewhat mysterious. They think he may have been murdered by his roommate, but nobody's sure. Residents work to keep the cemetery in good shape, including replacing some of the crumbling headstones. Nearby, a trail leads to this scenic overlook, showcasing a blend of Elkhorn's past and present. If you want to watch this story again, or if you missed one of my previous stories, you can watch every road trip and episode in a special segment on our website at NBCMontana.com.